Hi team, Coach Sean here. I want to talk to you about proper puck support and zone entry. Right, This all ties back into hockey sense, hockey IQ. We're trying to improve this, all right? And if we can, our processing time for our girls on the ice hopefully will speed up and allow them to make quicker decisions and we'll see less hesitation when on the ice, okay? So we're down deep in our zone. We've talked a lot about moving out of our zone and how to properly support. We're going to fast forward through this up into the neutral zone for now, okay? In between the blue lines. This is the speed zone. This is where I want you kiddos to fly, all right? As we come up, right? We're looking for a head man opportunity. That's best case scenario. That means a girl feet and stick up ice and she is going. If we see that opportunity, I want to hit her with a nice crisp pass and let her enter the zone. If that's not open and you can skate the puck up, perfectly fine. All right. As we get through the zone here with speed, we're going to continue across the blue line with speed. All right. No moves in here because we have a better chance of putting our buddy offside. Right. So we want to get across the blue line. A new term we've been working on with the girls is shoulder check. What does that mean? That means I'm, you're taking a quick glance over one or both of your shoulders. Okay. Why are we doing that? We're doing that to gather information. You're taking a quick picture of what's going on around you, okay? Then we know what our options are. Your options might be nothing, but they might be pretty darn good. And if we have our head down, we'll never know, okay? So we're going to get across the line with speed. Shoulder check. If you've got a free lane to the net, absolutely take it. Go snipe one score. If you have a defenseman that's standing still or moving slow, one move, get around him, go score, all right? If we don't have that, that shoulder check is going to give us the information we need, all right? So if we're clogged up here, we can't easily drive the net, all right? This is a better option. Let's get to space to open area, right? We've talked a lot about the decisions we can make here. We can continue to drive, right? We can Gretzky, we can take a shot, we can do a lot of things, all right? What we don't want to do is skate directly into this defenseman and turn the puck over and here they go. Okay, so we're going to get to space. After we've shoulder checked, now we know what's going on. The first girl to enter the zone, we're going to call her F1, forward one. All right. Next player coming up ice, this will be F2. All right. Your decision to make. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You can support from behind or drive the net. If you decide to drive the net, your F2 here, F3. I want you, you have to pay attention and read what that second forward's doing. I want you to do the opposite. So if she decides to drive the net, we are now going to support from behind. If we were to come back and do this over again, F2, if she decides to support from behind, no problem. F3, where should you go? The opposite F2, so we're going to drive the net, okay? F3. Now we have the net, okay? F3. Now we have a whole bunch of options. We've got her, we've got her, and what does this do? What we want to do as often as possible is create two on one opportunities versus them. So as we drive the net, this might pull this defender over here, which gives F1 more space. There's a whole bunch of different scenarios we could go through. But when we do not have the puck, our job is to help the puck carrier in every way we can. And sometimes that has nothing to do with us even getting the puck on our stick. But in where we go, it forces defenders to respect what we're doing and creates more time and distance for our puck carrier. Okay? If they don't respect your option, what you're doing, then F1 should move the puck to you. Make sense? Okay, kiddos. And keep playing hard. Keep playing fast. We're going to work on increasing our hockey IQ. Last thing I didn't touch on, okay? As we enter the zone here, what happens if F1 is a defender, right? She's a defenseman that carried the puck in the zone. The second player in, I don't care what position you are, you're, you're the second forward in, you're coming here, F3 comes this way. So if you're one of those offensive players, say you're playing center and you're behind the rush, no problem. You see that defenseman going to the zone, now we have to fill and replace for our friend, okay? As the comp play continues to develop, and you don't have the puck on your stick, initial defenseman, what I want you to do at that point, come back to your buddy, switch. Now you're back to D, and we've got our forwards working, okay? A lot of times, 
hopefully when we have the puck in the zone, this is for another day, but this is called a cycle and we'll generally be in this triangle type of position. And that way we can move the puck, the puck comes here, what happens? Then we can move and we can replace and we'll get into that. That's for another day. Bottom line, the more we can learn, uh, the more we can teach our kiddos to increase their their processing time when they're on the ice, get their eyes up, see what's happening, learn how to properly support our friends. We're going to create time and space for our puck carrier. And that's really what we want. Remember, if we don't have the puck, a lot of times that requires you to do even more work than when you have it.